Psalm 77 I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night I stretched out my untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remember you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days and the years of long ago. I remember my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, To this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The water saw you, God. The water saw you and writhe, and the very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water, the heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lift up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. This psalm, according to the method of many other psalms, begins with sorrowful complaints, but ends with comfortable encouragements. The complaints seem to be of personal grievances, but the encouragements relate to the public concerns of the church, so that it is not certain whether it was penned upon a personal or a public account. If they were of private troubles that he was groaning under, it teaches us that what God has wrought for his church in general may be improved for the comfort of particular believers. If it is some public calamity that he is here lamenting, his speaking of it so freely as if it had been some particular troubles of his own shows how much we should lay to heart the interests of the church of God and make them ours. This psalm is spoken in the dialect of captives, and therefore some teachers think it was penned in the captivity in Babylon. In singing this psalm, we must take shame to ourselves for all our sinful distrust of God and of His providence and promise, and gives Him the glory of His power and goodness by thankful commemoration of what He has done for us formerly and a cheerful dependence on Him for the future. The psalm concludes abruptly and does not apply those ancient instances of God's power to the present distresses of the church as we might have expected. But as soon as the good man began to meditate on these things, he found he had gained his point. His very entrance upon his, this matter gave him light and joy. His fears suddenly and strangely vanished so that he needed to go no further. He went on his way and did eat, and his countenance was no more sad, like Hannah.